again guys, welcome, and in this video I am going to be talking about more uh, Gemcraft Labyrinth. This time I am going to explain all of the gems in detail, the differences in their specials and so forth, and how best to use them, or at least how best I think I know how to use them. And I'm also going to try and show you what a mana, what's a mana farm. A lot of people are probably asking the question, what on earth is that? Do I need to know about it? Uh, how do I make one? Etc. Etc. I will show you all of that now. Let's see. I picked one. It's a field that I basically I haven't done a field high score for in endurance before, and it's got a pretty high field base. So actually, let me just show you where it is. H6. It's H. There we go. It's nested amongst a whole bunch that have like really high scores with really high field bases and it's just one that I just need to do just to get more high scores so I can get more skill points so I can put more in my focus so all the settings are up on maximum um, all the skills yeah that's pretty much maxed out right there I wonder if I do that nope still not enough for one of those so Maybe if I do that twice. And there we go, that's that's a lot of skill points used. I've maxed out everything. I've got these pretty high up. Focus oh it's so important. Now I'll just leave the game paused for a second. Yeah, let me just do this. This is actually a really expensive thing to do at the start of the month, but anyways. Let's get one of all types of gems. Now, what have we got here? Uh, first of all, let me try and find this. Let's see, put that there, put that there, there, put that there. So these guys have to go around like that, and around like that, and down. These guys, they just come in from the side, they go like that. And this tomb. Oh, look, we've got a mana shard. There you go. I can explain mana shards as well. And a tomb. Awesome. This worked out a lot better than I thought. Let's see. We've got four charge bolt shrines, which they look impressive and they look awesome and they look like they'll really help, but in all honesty, I don't think they will help that much. Now, what have we got here? We've got. I'll put the ones that I feel are the most useless. <laughs> there, and I'll put the ones that I feel are most useful here. Now, let's talk about the useless ones first. Pure purple, perp or gems with purple components in them, they do essentially a reduced armor for every time they fire. So every time this gem fires at a monster, that monster loses a little bit of armor every shot. Uh, in this instance for this particular gem it's 0.25 if I upgrade it 0.35 armor 0.48 armor and so on and so on and so on um, strangely enough unfortunately monsters cannot have negative armor so the gem would have been really really powerful if it could make armor levels go into negative numbers which means which would mean a lot more damage per hit, but it doesn't. Uh, when a monster loses all of its armor straight to zero, that's it. It loses it, and therefore it's not protected. Therefore, it just gets all the raw damage straight onto its hit points. If it has armor, then I think it protects it. I don't think it's a straight swap of it takes six less damage in this instance because there's six armor, and so I don't think it works like that, but it's a reasonable assumption to make if you're in the lower levels and you you know your monsters have lower armor levels basically you know two three four it's relatively a straight swap uh, they will absorb that much damage before they take the rest on your hit points I honestly I don't really find much of a use for this at all even if you go nuts with the gem bombs all over your um you know if you do something like this and all of a sudden all of your monsters here 
it just let's see 17 13 35 22 blah 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 this was a novel gem type the purple one was pretty novel and pretty useful in the previous game gemcraft chapter 0 it worked a little bit differently there was a percentage chance to reduce armor by a certain amount and it worked out to be quite useful um, in this game however it's just a set amount every time it hits it's a very small amount even with yeah, upgrading this and to be honest armor levels the way I play the game my gems become so powerful with their damage that armor is almost completely negligible you can ignore it even late later in the um, stages of an endurance level I might be playing and the armor level of monsters might become as high as 30,000 that might seem like a lot but trust me when my gems are doing a million damage 30,000 armor is it's it's a drop in the ocean, it does nothing to save them. So, all in all, I find the purple gem is unfortunately just something that gets in the way, it's useless. Moving on, Cyan is... Now this might seem pretty cool, 24% chance to shock for 3 seconds, raises shock target's immunity. Basically what happens is it has a percentage of chance to shock a target in other words make it stop and jiggle around and stuff for a certain amount of time that time no matter how much you upgrade this it will stay at three seconds but the percentage of the chance for it to be shocked will go up now unfortunately I think that this gem suffers from the same problem as the blue one and I will talk about the blue one at the same time actually, target gets 29% slower for 4 seconds and as you upgrade it uh, I think the amount of seconds stays the same but it's percentage of slowness now you could argue these two seem like very good gems to have and on the face of it they do seem pretty alright but having said that these would be useful if you were playing a game where there aren't many monsters on the map you know, you, you know your gem is only needing to concentrate its fire on one or two or three monsters at a time it has the time to actually keep the monster in its range and destroy it and then move on to the next one but in this game it doesn't work like that you've got what 36 even without angering you've giants produce the least number of um, monsters per wave and the lowest they can get is 4, the highest is 16. There's lots and lots of monsters, so yeah, sure, maybe you would be slowing down or you would be freezing monsters for a certain amount of time, but the gem just keeps attacking the one monster. And that's all nice and well, but what about the other monsters that are just going through? Nah, I'd, I'm not convinced that these two are actually useful. They used to be useful in Gemcraft uh chapter zero or at least slow was anyways i always used slow in conjunction with mana and um the red gem that allowed it to shoot more than one um yeah more than one target at a time up to a maximum of four or five or something like that while it was in a trap that was good as a mana farm but mm, nah these days not not in this game these two, uh, these three are actually relatively useless, to be honest. I don't like them at all. They, um, they're just not useful enough. At least not compared to these four, and even Poison is a little bit more useful in the game than these. These are just, I don't know, they're remnants of the old games, and sure, they could have been useful, they could have been better, but for the way the gameplay unfolds, I would not recommend either of the, any of these. Now, the fourth one, Poison. Uh, poison damage over five seconds on the face of it it seems as though well you know what first I'd like to point out sure you could have something like this and I know there are similar sort of weapons in other tower defense games where say there's a flamethrower or something and you set something on fire or you poison a monster or something like that and it takes damage over time that's all nice and well but why? I don't understand why you would want that instead of 
another gem or another tower or something that just does that damage off the bat. Why would it have to happen over time after it's been hit? It, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, the only reason why I like this poison pure green gem though is because when you poison a monster, the poison does the damage that it says it will over the time that it says it will to the monster ignoring the armor. It does that damage straight to the hit point. So if you have uh, armor level 35 if I had, let's say for the sake of argument, a gem that was pure green or it had a green component to it, I had it in a trap and it did, uh, let's say the trap was here so every single monster would go over this point and miraculously it did 15,000 poison damage over 5 seconds or whatever, it, however many seconds it is. Basically a time shorter than what it takes for a monster to go all the way to the end. Then it would kill every single one of these giant monsters no problems. It ignores the armor level and so forth. This is good for when you're playing against armored monsters. Um, I think they work better in traps because the damage and the I think the firing speed stays the same, does it? Yes, the firing speed stays the same when you go from a tower to a trap, but the damage goes down, the rate of fire goes... Uh, no, the range goes down as well. It's actually this little circle, it cannot increase. In the previous game, Gemcraft uh, Chapter Zero, you could actually increase the range of uh, gems in traps. In this, it's a set range, no matter what. See, just doesn't change. And also, the special goes up. 14 poison damage over 5 seconds, 30 poison damage over 5 seconds, it increases it greatly. So, basically, what you'd want to do is if you're playing against armored level monsters, you don't. It's not a useful tactic for, um, say, I don't know, killing all of the monsters in or armored monsters in a level, but it is good for thinning them out or weakening them greatly, allowing your tower gem to pick them off. If you do something like this, if you place them every now and then in uh, traps. So poison is good for that reason. And also for the same reason, it's good for playing against swarm levels for exactly the same thing. It picks off a lot of them and allows your towers to pick off the remainder. But that's about the only use I can find for poison. And to be honest, it's more of a desperate measure because at the end of the day I'd still rather have a tower that's um, surrounded by amplifiers and so forth and just picking off all of the monsters by itself. Now, moving on to the four useful gems in the game. Let's see, you have yellow. 25% chance to deal two times damage. Now, I'm going to get rid of these because I want the mana. So I want to upgrade this. What happens? Oh, every time it goes over another 100% when you do upgrade the gem, it has 100% chance now to deal two times the damage. So in other words, it will always do two times whatever damage it does on a particular shot. So when it fires at an enemy, you don't know how much damage it does. All you know is it's somewhere in between, in this instance, 234 and 687 up there. Somewhere in there, that's the damage, the base damage that that shot fired will do. And you know that it will be double that, whatever that number is. And you know on top of that there's a 26% chance that it will be triple that. So that's how yellow gems work. Now I do think, if I remember correctly, that in the last game, Gemcraft Chapter 0, you could only do a maximum of three times damage, I think. Um, and that was a percentage tends to do three times damage with yellow gems in that game. In this game, it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. So I've had gems that have had 100% chance to deal 2,060 times damage and 
uh, certain percentage chance to do 2061 uh, times damage. So pure yellow or even combined gems with the yellow component can become extremely powerful as far as raw damage is concerned. I highly recommend it. I love this gem. This is the one that I end up, that's the colour that I end up late in an endurance match just pouring into my main tower gem. It really does smash the hell out of your monsters and I cannot recommend it enough. Lime, 22% chance to hit two targets. Now, again, just like the yellow, if it goes over 100, then it has a 100% chance to hit two targets and a certain percentage chance to hit three targets. In other words, it's a bouncing attack. It will fire a shot at an enemy and then once it hits that enemy, it has a chance, determined by this, to bounce onto another enemy and another enemy and another enemy. And it's not a decreasing amount of damage either. Every time it bounces to another enemy, it's the exact same damage. So, unlike a lot of tower defences that I've seen, or games that I've seen where there is a bouncing attack, it's full damage for all of the times it bounces. And again, it can go up to you know, thousands of targets. So that is another really powerful gem, especially when you're picking off big clumps of enemies. It's really useful. You can actually see that in action in my endurance field M4 challenge where I get the high score. That's you can see that plainly in action. It's it's very useful. Highly recommend both of these. Red. Now a lot of people have been bagging this one, saying that it's not a true pro I don't know, gemcraft labyrinth players gem. It's I'm sorry, I'm not convinced. I love the um, Bloodbound, I love the way it works, and I have to say, I think it is essential to have on every single game at the start, because it allows you to take control of the game very quickly at the start, and get a lot of mana from sending waves early, or angering them and so forth, because your gem becomes very powerful very quickly. Now, I'll tell you how it works. 36% of total kills code to damage. Now, if you've played either of the previous Gemcraft games, that's not how the Red Gem worked. The Red Gem has a new ability in Gemcraft Labyrinth. Previously, it basically did a certain area of splash damage. There are no gems that do splash, uh, splash damage in Gemcraft Labyrinth. Instead, it's got Bloodbound, which means 36% or a percentage of total kills goes to damage. Now, that's not the kills that you see there, it's the one under it, the total kills. Kills gets reset to zero every time you modify the gem by combining it or upgrading it or whatnot. Total kills is the number of kills that it's made throughout its life as a gem. And if you combine two gems with the total kills of say 40 in one and 50 in the other, the, when you combine those two gems together, the total build kills combine as well. So it's in your best interests to have any gems in towers or even in traps any gems that you have you that have made a lot of kills it's very important that they have a red component to them because they will become so much more powerful as far as damage is concerned I cannot stress that enough that is a really good gem to have having said that the increases make it very powerful in early stages of a battle, but if you're doing an endurance run, a mid battle and late battle, its its uses become decreasingly much smaller. Like yes, it will keep increasing, but there are other things you can do the gem, namely pumping up this and this component into it to make them more powerful. It just it's a feature that makes the gem rapidly much more useful than normal in the early stages of the game, but after the early stages, 
its uses are almost negligible. So at the end of the day, you end up dialing right back the red component of any main gems you have, and you force the other colors onto them instead. That's how I'd use them. So I really do recommend Bloodbound. Anyone who has any thoughts against them, I really do wish you reconsider because it's a damn good gem. And lastly, the all-important orange one. This has been doing the same thing throughout all of the games. Uh, in fact, the only ones that have changed are the red one, as I explained, and in any major way, only the armor tearing has changed. Instead of it being a percentage to do a certain amount, it does a set amount every time, a much smaller amount. Anyways, moving on, mana. Um, this is how what you would use to gain mana, essentially. Every time this fires a shot at an enemy and it actually succeeds in hitting an enemy, you get that much mana extra. So it, it's not mana per kill, it's mana per hit. And it might not seem like much because this is a really low level one, but if you start to really upgrade it, 2.5 mana gain per hit doesn't sound like much, but if you put them in traps, then all of a sudden they become pretty powerful. And if you combine them, mana, your orange component with a lime component, then your your gem inside the trap will start to really pull in some mana. Basically, if you get that to a, I don't know, 100% chance to hit 200 targets and it does 300 mana gain per hit or something like that, you can just imagine how quickly this is going to rise up. And I will show you how that works. I'll show that to you in action inside a mana farm tutorial. I won't show you this game. This game I'm going to round it off by quickly showing you what happens when you attack. that will attack the mana shard. Strangely enough it acts as a structure I think so I think this will go straight away and attack it. Yep there we go. Basically mana shards are just areas on the map where a square where it's got a certain amount of mana and you attack it with your gems and it goes towards your mana every time you get a little bit of it off. So that's mana shards in a nutshell not many levels actually have mana shards on them, in fact very few do, and when they do, um, it's awesome. It really does help you quickly get your mana up. I mean, sometimes it's nice earlier in the games where you don't have much in the way of mana to start off with and so forth. Earlier on in the levels, it's nice to just maybe have a tower with a grade 1 or grade 2 gem right next to the mana shard and they're slowly chipping away at them and your mana is slowly going up and up and up and up and up. It really does help out like that and that's how I recommend you use mana shards if you find them on levels uh, at least early in the game and yeah last thing I have to show you is that tomb so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break open that tomb. Tombs Again, like mana shards, do not exist on all levels, they exist on only a few. Uh, they have a certain amount of hit points and a certain amount of armor, which varies from tomb to tomb, but they will be the same hit points and armor from battle to battle on the same field. Okay, It's not like this is just randomly made up 5,000 hit points and 30 armor. That will be 5,000 hit points and 30 armor every time you play this field over. And what happens you can actually attack it with a gem in a tower or you can attack it by dropping gem bombs on it so I could do this oh wow that's actually really easy how powerful are these oh yeah 94 to 300 there you go 
I've basically broken it the tomb. What happens is you get a whole bunch of runner monsters come out, you get a whole bunch of armored monsters come out, a whole bunch of normal monsters come out, and a couple of giant monsters come out. And they're pretty fast, to be honest. You have to be careful with them. But basically, yeah, let me just get rid of those. No, I don't have enough. <laughs> oh well. Da -da -da -da, not enough mana to make myself another amplifier, unfortunately. Or do I? Yes, I do now. Yeah, basically, you've got to be careful when opening up tombs. They do give you a lot of monsters. It's kind of like having another couple of waves dropped on you all of a sudden and if you're not prepared for them they will overwhelm you and you will cop a lot of banishment and when they banish they do come straight back out from the tomb a nice thing to note however with tombs is that once a tomb is broken open and all of the monsters that come out of a tomb are destroyed then you don't need to keep this path open I could actually if I destroyed all of the monsters I could place a wall right there I can't because there's still monsters from the tomb there but just something to note you can block off the path or you could just build a tower on the path or so forth it, it's a nice place to build a tower anyways that's tombs shards and all of the gems explained next game I will show you probably this level again and I will try and get a mana farm going and I'll show you basically how I do endurance but it won't be a whole endurance level I'll just play it enough to show you what a mana farm is how it works and how you can use it to essentially make yourself powerful enough to beat endurance I'll see you then catch you later